What's up, guys? So I wanted to start off today's episode just by showing you guys my Porsche wall that a lot of people on Instagram have been asking me about. Um, these are some of the cars that I, you know, collected. Uh, RWBs, you know, my car. These are 118 uh, models, size models. Kind of did a before and after. Don't mind the Street Fighter pick. I'm a big Street Fighter fan. Loved them for years. Well, loved that game for years. Um, here we go here. It's a little Hot Wheels version of my car. Hot Wheels version of Christian's car. Christian is the guy that I mentioned that uh, helped me with the whole RWB process. I don't know if you guys remember from, I think like one of my very early episodes when I was breaking down the whole RWB thing. So that's his car. Then... This is a history of uh, all 911s. It has literally started from the very first 911 to the current one. It gives a whole complete like pictures and descriptions, and it's a pretty cool book. And this one is uh, Porsche over the past 70 years, and it has every Porsche in there, not just 911s. Anything in there like Caymans and you know uh, Panameras, whatever. Like literally every Porsche is listed in there. It's a pretty cool book too to have. <music> Another question I get a lot of from you guys is uh, my Scrape hoodies. As I mentioned to you guys before, I'm part of Team Scrape, which is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal team. Phenomenal. <laughs> They're an awesome team. How about that? Uh, yeah. So as I mentioned before, Scrape is an awesome team. Uh, my buddy Miko started it. We found it. Well, I, I was one of the first guys when it was, it was really me, Miko. It was four of us that started Scrape. And Miko's really the head guy behind Scrape. But if you guys are interested, if you guys already follow Team Scrape, um, as you know, we you know we win a lot of awards at shows. We take best team a lot. Uh, we have a lot of sick cars. We even have guys out in Japan under Scrape. Um, it's pretty international, and our apparel does very well. Um, a lot of people are huge fans of the apparel. So if you're interested, if you like the hoodies that you see, that I usually have. Um, you could put in the order. You just go to instagram send us a message at on to our page at scrape life uh, basically spelled out scrape with just life l-i-f-e added onto it and yeah access would you know put in the order for whatever you want we have hoodies we have shirts we have hats we have shorts we have jacket you know so many different things in whatever color well most of like in the hoodies and the shirts you can choose the color, different color variations that's why you see my hoodies i always have different colors on but yeah, give us guys, you know, give us some support. Get us some uh, some apparel. We'll be down with the scrape team. So today I have a very special episode for you guys. Um, I wasn't planning on airing this. Well, I wasn't even planning on filming this now or airing this today. I actually uh, was going to wait. But... Um, uh, first things first today I was driving my car and I was actually gonna go wash it and the alternator went on me took a took a crap on me so I you know through my insurance company I had a flatbed come they took they picked up the car where I was at and I had it towed to uh, Pot Singer Reworks out in Long Island, which is the same shop that did my PPI when I first bought the car. Also the same shop that I do my regular like little maintenance stuff at. And um, But I'm gonna do a feature video on that. You guys gotta see Pot Singer Reworks. You gotta meet the owner, Peter. He's an awesome guy. You know, he's very honest, very straightforward. His prices don't break your pockets. And he's been super helpful with this like journey with my Porsche. She answers a lot of my questions. Um, but the reason why I bring it up is because one of the major things that I spoke to you guys about, and this is the huge announcement that I was going to make, is that um, I wanted more power out of the car. You guys know this. Remember, my car only comes with 270 horsepower. And I'm like, I mean, even though the car is like, once again, it's like a 3,000 pound car, which is the power weight is, is still really good but I just want more power out of the car 
And um, so I was talking with Peter and, you know, Peter broke down a lot of things as far as like, you know, parks wise and costs and, you know, and I also did research myself and it's a very expensive build to build my flat six. Um, like to give you an example, just to give you a rough example, the Gunther Works cars that you're familiar with that are like, you know, they bought out from a 3.6 to a 4.0. They sound amazing and run amazing. Those cars are freaking, I mean, those engines are just sick and they're built by Rock Sport Racing. And generally, generally speaking, I think, I believe the prices for those kind of motors, those fully built motors are ranging from like 60 to 80 grand, depending on what you really want to do. And you know, you're, you're getting a bump from 270, like for my, for my car, for instance, I would be getting a bump from like 270 horses to about like 430 horses, um, which is still phenomenal. 430 horses in my car is phenomenal, but I don't want to spend 60 to 80 grand to do that. That's 60 to 80 grand. That could be a 997 turbo I can have as a sidecar. You get what I'm saying? Like I just, so I've been trying to think of other ways to work around me getting power. I started looking at going boost, but I really don't want to go boost. I really want to keep the car NA as I mentioned in my old episode, like one of the very first episodes I did. I want to keep it NA and I, um, you know, relatively to go boost is going to cost me like over 20 grand and supercharge. I don't want to do that because I don't want to retain so much heat in the engine bay with the supercharger kits. Um, you know, supercharger is like slightly cheaper than going turbocharge, but it's just not my preference. So I've been trying to figure out a way, figure out a way, figure out a way. And I came up with one way to do a swap, to do a swap. You guys are wondering what swap. So for my research, I decided that the swap that I'm going to do is a K20 from the Honda Civics. If you're familiar with those swaps, the K20s. Um, before you crucify me. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I'm bullshitting you. I'm not doing the K20 from the Honda Civics. I'm still, I am doing the swap, but I'm not doing that. Um, I mean, there's some air cooled Porsches that have done that. If you Google it, you'll see some, and they run pretty good. They run pretty good, but I'm not doing that. Uh, so, all jokes aside, what I really have been considering doing is a LS. Yeah, a LS. I know some of you guys are like, oh, here we go, another LS or whatever. But it's like, you can't deny how good LSs are. If you really do your homework on LSs or if you've seen them in action or if you are around LSs, they're very, very well built um, engines. And the reason why I'm considering LS is because, well, it's, well, the reason why, yeah, the reason why I'm considering LS is it's a better bang for the buck compared to everything else I would do, like I mentioned with the pricing wise. So all in, roughly for me to do an LS swap and not a ls1 not a junkyard ls i'm doing i would do a brand new ls3 zero mileage and to do that whole complete swap would run me about 20 grand the funny thing about it is my engine my flat six that's in my car right now if i sold that engine in running condition is running perfectly fine uh compression and leak down is amazing it's i mean uh, you know it's good everything is good um, those engines are going right now for about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. It's not common you you could snatch one of those up, and when you see them up, they're usually going pretty quick. Um, the reason why it's not common to see those is because a it's not common to find a shell. It's hard for you to even get a shell of a nine nine three or nine six four or whatever, and then even to find an engine is it's it's just as hard because most you know, most people don't, they rebuild them or they run strong. Those are strong engines. So I say this because I would sell that motor because I'd have no use for it. And it would basically cover the whole cost of the swap. 
So I would keep my drive, I would keep my, my transmission. I would keep the original six speed transmission that I have in my car, um, the G50. And I would, uh, with the kits that are out now, I can make that transmission to, to the LS, which is awesome. So what I would do is, um, so what I would do is I would keep that transmission. I would do the LS swap and I'm going to list you the reasons why I'm considering the LS swap and that you guys could give me your feedback on, you know, what you think about it. Um, like I said, I already know it's going to piss some people off because it's a Porsche and they're like, oh, LS doesn't deserve to be in it. But if it pisses you off, I'm pretty sure you're already pissed off at the fact that I'm doing an RWB and I'm cutting up the car anyway. So it's like, I guess, you know, you're going to be more mad. But I'm one of those guys that if you know me, you know my bills. I don't follow. I don't follow the norm. I don't follow what everybody in the forums is doing. I don't, you know, I do what I want to do that because I want to build the car the way I want to build it so I can enjoy it not to please everybody else and um and a lot of you guys that are watching this are watching because i think you enjoy that fact i think you enjoy that it's out of the box and you know or you know he's or me uh, you know speaking to me like you know you know joe's willing to kind of push the boundaries and do what he want to do. He, do he's not restricted to what everybody else thinks and you know that's just how I, operate so i'm gonna give you guys the list and then you guys tell me what you think the ls3 power wise 530 horses 495 foot pounds of torque that's at the crank um as i mentioned before it's like i could spend the, the 60 000 i mean i don't even want to spend 60 just to even say that just to build my engine is crazy like yeah, I don't even want to spend that, but um, you know, I'm just giving you guys an example of why I'm deciding on why I'm thinking of doing that less. But let's say in one scenario, I spend the sixty thousand dollars and I build my flat six, and that's only for me to get up to relatively maybe like four fifty or somewhere around that range, where I could be spending twenty thousand dollars and I could be getting a brand new LS three at 530 horses and on top of that my me selling my flat six will offset the price of the whole entire swap which is pretty good already that already sounds good so like i said it's an ls3 so the cost of a brand new ls3 is roughly around like around eight grand somewhere around there depending on what you need if it's fully dressed up i would say like eight grand if you get like a um, if you, if you get it like not fully dressed up, it's, it's definitely cheaper. You can get it like around seven, 6,000 and this is brand new. So this is brand new and, and I'm, and I'm speaking from like me getting it from, uh, blueprint engines. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those. Any of you guys, you GM guys, or you, you 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 know, your small block, big block guys or whatever. I'm sure you probably familiar with, uh, blueprint engines, but their engines are brand new with a 30 month warranty, which is great. So that's year, that's that's two and a half years with, with, with a warranty on a brand new engine. So that's another perk of doing the LS, a brand new LS. Um, the next thing that's another perk, or well, another pro I would say, is that the LS actually weighs less than my flat six. Uh, a LS, like the LS3, it's just weighs around, I think like 418 pounds. And my flat six is just over 500. I think it's like 510 pounds. I'm not really sure, but it's somewhere around those numbers. Um, so if you really weigh everything, like if you weigh the cost and then the, the cost to, and also the power that you're getting from the cost, the fact that the engine is brand new, the engine weighs less, and the fact that it's warranty. You are you guys getting like are you guys understanding why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling about doing this LS? Um so 
You guys tell me what you think. Tell me if it would be a cool thing to do. Tell me if, you know, oh, no, nah, you know, I, listen, I'm open to all opinions. Doesn't mean I'm going to follow them, but I'm open to hear what you guys say. And also remember that this is not going in stock. If I was keeping my car bone stock, like I'm talking about stock body. I don't, sorry, I don't even want to say bone stock. But if I was keeping my car stock body as is, I don't think I would do this swap. The reason why, because I would like to keep the car as original as possible. But you guys remember, I'm doing the RWB. And to me, the RWB on the stock platform, as far as the flat six that come in that car now, it's a, it's a great balance. Like, especially in Japan, a lot of the guys run it just like that on the track because it's a great balance with, with the wider track base and, and um, the power that car makes. It's a perfect balance around the circuit. Um, but me, I just want more power. I just like the look of an RWB, especially seeing the RWB with that actually moves, that moves, moves. And I've seen a couple. And Christian, once again, I mentioned him before, Christian has several RWBs, and one of the ones that he has, which is Yamato, if you look it up, it's a black 993 like mine, all-wheel drive. I'm gonna cue a video in. It's all-wheel drive like mine, and he's making roughly, I think, like almost 700 horses well his is built his ls3 is is it's no sorry it's a ls7 it's a fully built ls7 and i think he's making like 700 horses or something like that and dude that car's a monster i don't want to go that far because like he he told me that he doesn't even get traction of fourth gear on highway poles he breaks all four tires in fourth gear on highway poles and i'm just like dude i don't need that much the five and changes are already a lot for me, especially on the weight of that car. It's gonna feel insane. And once again, that's to the crank. That's not to the wheels. To the wheels, I'm gonna lose about, what, like 15% uh, power loss. But that's still a lot. That is still a lot. To have a car, like my car, let's say at close to 500 horses, or probably 500 to the wheels, on a 3,000 pound car, that's a very fast car, especially for the street. So, now you guys understand why I would be doing it. Like I said, I just want my car to have more power. I'm going to keep my G50 Trandy, which is an amazing transmission. Um, I'm just going to rebuild it because it's, it's a 25-year-old transmission. You know, I'm going to do the synchros. I'm going to do everything. All the internals over. And um, I already have a shop in mind that's going to do it. I've actually spoken to Mo at Petrol Works, and I don't know if you guys in the Tri-State area or anywhere else that are familiar with Petrol Works, they make a lot of crazy builds over there. They have a lot of like sick, sick, like LS and 2J, like stuff that you would even like even think of 2Js and LSs going in, and they, they've done it. Their fabrication work is insane. If you look them up on, um, on Instagram, uh, petrol works you'll see that their work is crazy mo has a crazy supra actually uh matt farah actually has driven that supra matt farah and um uh, uh i think tanner faust drove it and there's a youtube video of them driving uh his supra and his supra is nuts super is nuts but that's gonna wrap up today's episode i appreciate you guys sitting down and hearing me out and once again comment below tell me guys what you think about me doing this ls swap and i'll give you guys an update let you guys know if i'm gonna pull the trigger or not also i'm gonna take a well also i'm gonna bring you guys to passing reworks as i mentioned earlier so you can guys check out his shop you know if you see the work he does in the porsches that are over there these old school minty like oh man like i don't even want to talk about it you just guys have to see it and you, you guys are going to be blown away by the cars that the the old school Porsches that you see over there that he does work on like it's pretty sick 
and also I'll take you guys by Petrol Works so you can check it out so you can see some of the crazy stuff that they got in there. I, when I went in there, they had like a 68, I think it was a 68 Mustang that had a 2JZ in it with uh, the BMW DCT trainee from like the, I think it's, it might've been from like the either the E92 M3 or it might've been from like the F10 M5. I didn't really question it, but it was mated to the 2JZ, which is insane. And I think they had like a, uh, was it a F100? With a sick LS swap in it, full custom piping and everything. And um, sick, so I'm gonna take you guys over there. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that if I do this LS swap, you have to remember that I'm, it's, my car is air cooled. So, you know, I gotta convert it to water cooled. You know, do a radiator up front, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I need a shop that does sick fabrication work. Um, I, as I mentioned, there's kits out there already that could do everything for you, but it's still it's still good to have a shop that if something if something is missing, they could fill in that blank. You get what I'm saying? And I think Petrol Works might be the one to do that for me. So uh, if I do the swap, I'm gonna take you guys along the way, show you guys how you know how it is, and uh, we'll see. On to the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next week.